ശ്രീമതി ആർ പത്മാവതി ഹെഡ് ഓഫ് ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് ഇ സി എ ധനലക്ഷ്മി ശ്രീനിവാസൻ കോളേജ് ഓഫ് എഞ്ചിനീയറിംഗ് ആൻഡ് ടെക്നോളജി ചെന്നൈ ഷി പെർസ്യൂഡ് ഹർ ബാച്ചിലർ ഓഫ് എഞ്ചിനീയറിംഗ് ഇൻ ഇലക്ട്രോണിക്സ് ആൻഡ് ഇൻസ്ട്രുമെന്റേഷൻ എഞ്ചിനീയറിംഗ് അറ്റ് ദ നാഷണൽ എഞ്ചിനീയറിംഗ് കോളേജ് കോവിൽപട്ടി ഷി ദെൻ വെന്റ് ഓൺ ടു വർക്ക് ആസ് എ ടെക്നിക്കൽ എഡിറ്റർ ഇൻ ഡോമിക്സ് ടെക്നിക്കൽ ഇൻഫർമേഷൻ പ്രൈവറ്റ് ലിമിറ്റഡ് ചെന്നൈ ഷി ദെൻ പെർസ്യൂഡ് ഹർ മാസ്റ്റേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് എഞ്ചിനീയറിംഗ് ഇൻ അപ്ലൈഡ് ഇലക്ട്രോണിക്സ് അറ്റ് ദ സത്യഭാമ യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി ചെന്നൈ She is currently pursuing her PhD in Anna University Chennai. She has published several national and international journals and has attended many conferences. Her areas of interest include linear integrated circuits, digital electronics, electronic circuits, VLSI design. Welcome to UGC lecture series BSc Applied Electronics Oscillators and Amplifiers. This module deals with the feedback amplifiers in which we are going to see the effect of feedback on gain and bandwidth practical feedback circuits phase and frequency considerations nyquist criteria and gain and phase margin this is a small example of uh, the amplifier with the feedback we are going to determine the voltage gain input and output impedance with feedback for voltage series feedback circuit with the the gain of an amplifier minus 100 input impedance 10 kilo ohms output impedance 20 kilo ohms for the feedback of beta minus 0.1 and beta minus 0.5 so here we are going to derive the amplifier with the feedback for these parameters and uh, beta with two values minus 0.1 and uh, beta with minus 0.5 so when you see the answers here the feedback factor the amplifier with the feedback minus 9.0 and the input impedance is 110 kilo ohms output impedance is 1.82 kilo ohms for beta minus 0.1 that is for the first value beta minus 0.1 these are the values according to the formula a by 1 plus a beta and if beta is minus 0.5 when you see the gain it is reduced from uh, 9.092 minus uh, 1.96 if you change only the feedback factor that is beta as minus 0.5 and if you compare this input impedance previously it is 110 kilo ohms now it is 510 kilo ohms it is considerably increased and what about the output impedance it is previously it is 1.8282 kilo ohms and now it is 392.16 ohms right so it is reduced when you compare it with the previous case so if you slightly change the value of beta that is the feedback factor then you can trade off between the gain and the input impedance and output impedance whether you want higher gain then you go with the reduced beta and if you want to have higher input impedance and lower output impedance you can increase the value of beta in negative side that is if you have 0.1 in the first case these are all the values and if you have minus 0.5 for the second case considerably the voltage gain is reduced and the input impedance is increased and the output impedance is reduced this is what we need to have in a perfect electronic circuit and not for the amplification factor is reduced here but uh, whatever we need according to the application we can decide the value of beta here this is a simple example of the feedback factor to select the value of the feedback factor for the input impedance output impedance and gain whichever is needed and next is reduction in frequency distortion reduction in fre frequency distortion happens because we we fed back the output voltage here we have a given a negative feedback so that the amplification factor is tremendously reduced by the factor of 1 plus beta a because of this reduction also the frequency distortion is reduced by the same factor and we are assuming in practical the beta a value the product of beta a must be greater than greater than 1 and so when you put the value in the equation a by 1 plus beta a then one is negligible because beta a is uh, higher than 1 so the amplification factor with the feedback can be written as approximately equal to 1 by beta a 
and uh, if the gain is reduced by the factor of 1 plus beta a, ultimately the frequency distortion will also get reduced and so in noise and non-linear distortion by the same factor 1 plus beta a and if beta a is practically considered to be greater than 1 and it is reduced by the factor of beta a that is noise and non-linear distortion is also gets reduced by the factor of beta a since the gain open loop configuration of the circuit is reduced by the factor of beta a again and uh, this is the effect of negative feedback on gain and bandwidth. This is the graph drawn for the frequency response of a amplifier. So, x axis has input frequency that is the frequency of the input signal and y axis has the gain of the amplifier in dB and this is uh, in practical cases you have you will be drawing in semi log uh, graph sheet and in semi log graph sheet you know that in x axis there is no unit for the frequency because it will increase 10 times for the next uh, point and again for the next point for example this is 0 and for the next point it is 10 times of the first frequency and for the next time it is another 10 times of the previous frequency and so on. So, in x axis you have to say it is the range of the input signals frequency and it is in y axis it is gain in dB. So, here the first when you see the graph this curve is the frequency response of the amplifier without the feedback. So, here this is the mid band frequency this is constant and for the lower range of frequencies it is slightly increasing and for the higher range of frequency it is slightly reducing and this is because of the active component in the circuit as well as the circuit capacitances and so the increasing range and the reduction in the gain happens in the circuit and uh, when you see the bandwidth it is minus 3 dB line which intersects this curve at this point if you calculate the frequency and this is the lower cutoff frequency and here this is the upper cutoff frequency F2 is the upper cutoff frequency F1 is the lower cutoff frequency. So, the difference between these two frequencies is calculated as the bandwidth. So, B is the bandwidth of the amplifier without feedback and this is the 3 dB line if you take it in a normal uh, unit then it is 0 0.707 a that is from here it is uh, a by root 2 that is the value here if it is in db then it is 3 db here from this point to this point it is 3 db and if you give feedback what happens for the gain and what happens for the bandwidth we will be seeing now. So, here this a f naught this curve is for the amplifier with the feedback. So, here the gain is reduced from this point to this point. We know that if the feedback is given a is reduced by the factor of 1 plus beta a that is the formula we have derived already. So, we know that the voltage gain is reduced. So, this is the reduction in the gain if you give the feedback and here also again from 3 dB if you take wherever this uh, 3 dB line cuts the curve of the frequency response curve then that intersecting point will give you the upper cutoff frequency and the lower cutoff frequency. So, here this lower cutoff frequency is reduced and the upper cutoff frequency is increased by the same factor of beta a and so the difference between these two frequency is going to be the bandwidth the amplifier with the feedback if you compare the gain of uh, without feedback and with feedback without feedback has higher gain and with feedback has lower gain and if you compare the bandwidth of the circuit without feedback and with feedback this B is for without feedback and BF is for with feedback. So, bandwidth this B is reduced when you compare it with BF. So, BF is high. So, if you take the gain bandwidth product both are equal gain bandwidth product of the amplifier without feedback is same as that of the gain bandwidth product of the circuit with feedback. So, the product is always equal, but the gain is reduced if it is uh, with the feedback bandwidth is increased if it is with feedback. So, again according to the designer or an engineer 
whatever the requirement if the bandwidth has to be high then we have to give the feedback here again there is a trade off between the gain and the bandwidth here that is the effect of negative feedback with the gain and bandwidth and next is gain stability with feedback so here gain stability with feedback in the sense if you uh, calculate the relative change of the gain with the feedback with the same formula a by 1 plus a beta this is what we will be obtaining so this is approximately equal to 1 by modulus value of 1 by beta a da by this is the relative change again the relative change in the gain with the feedback is the factor of 1 by beta multiplied with the relative change with the gain without the feedback if beta a is greater than 1. So, this shows that the magnitude of relative change in gain d a f by a f that is the gain with the feedback is reduced by the factor beta a compared to that of the without feedback d a by a. So, always uh, if you go with the frequency dissertion it is reduced if you go with the noise and non-linear dissertion it is reduced and gain is also reduced here gain stability is relative change it is reduced with the factor of beta a when you compare it with the gain without feedback. So, now we are uh, going to see the some of the practical feedback circuits. So, this is an example of voltage series feedback with the FET. So, this is field effect transistor here and uh, how the voltage series feedback is implemented here. We know that what is the connection for voltage series feedback if it is voltage then the output voltage output voltage will be taken in parallel connection and if this is series feedback then it is it has to be fed the output of the feedback has to be connected in series with the input voltage so that is what we are going to see here so the, this is the across the output terminals we got two resistors r1 and r2 and in between these uh, resistance if you take the output then it is voltage shunt connection or parallel connection. So, when you see the circuit diagram at this point if you take it as the parallel connection and across this R2 is the part of the output signal we are giving as the feedback to the input and here this is straight away given to the input here. And so, VI is the effective voltage of VS and VF right. So, here for voltage you are connecting you are uh, taking parallel uh, in parallel and for series you are giving it to the series to the signal source right. So, here this is the connection and this is the effective voltage V i. So, without feedback the amplifier gain is we know that V naught by V i and it is uh, derived as minus G m or L. RL is the parallel combination of R1 and R2 here it is you have to write it as R1 and R2. The feedback network provides a feedback factor of Vf by V0 this is always Vf by V0 if it is related with voltage. So, feedback factor is Vf by V0 and what is the feedback factor across this R2 you are taking the output voltage. So, output voltage into R2 divided by R1 plus R2 here this is the feedback factor minus R2 by R1 plus R2. And what is A f that is with the feedback we know that A by 1 plus beta A. So, we know what is A we know what is beta everything is substituted here and we have got minus R 1 plus R 2 by R 2. So, this is the gain with feedback according to this circuit. In an operational amplifier connection how the voltage series uh, feedback is given here we know that some of the output this is an operational amplifier output of the amplifier is given as the input to one of the input terminals through the resistance R1 right and the same point is grounded through the resistance R2. Here you have to see the voltage series connection here if it is voltage then you are taking across this resistance R1 and, and if it is in series connection you have to give the signal in series to the input signal right. So, the voltage across the resistance R2 is taken. So, using this potential dividers R1 and R2 you are giving the part of the output voltage as the input to the feedback network. So, it is across the resistance R2 and it is given in series to the input uh, voltage source and the effective voltage is Vi. 
So, the difference between these two input voltage is the effective voltage. So, this is the voltage series feedback connection and we know that the feedback factor beta will be derived from R2 by R1 plus R2. So, across this R2 you are getting the feedback voltage Vf. So, the feedback factor is given as R2 divided by the total resistance combinations. We will have a short break. Welcome back after the break. So, we have seen the voltage series feedback in two connections like uh, with the help of the FET and with the help of the operational amplifier. Now, with the help of BJT again we are going to see the voltage series uh, feedback under the emitter follower configuration. So, when you take the output across the emitter terminal and this is the emitter follower configuration. So, this voltage if there is no feedback then the output voltage is at across the emitter terminal and if there is a feedback how will you correlate this voltage series feedback connection in the circuit is the voltage across this V naught is connected with the input terminal here. So, this is the across the emitter terminal you are taking the output voltage some part of the output voltage through this resistance R e. This is the resistance R e it is not mentioned here and across the resistance R e whatever the voltage is the feedback voltage given to the input side and which is in parallel and this effective voltage the emitter base terminal has the effective voltage between V s and this feedback voltage and we know that the gain of the amplifier is given as V naught by V s and it is calculated already calculated as H of E R I by R E by divided by H I E and uh, you know that what is H of E what is H I E this is the forward transfer ratio forward current transfer ratio ratio and this is input impedance H I E is input impedance and E is for emitter it represents the emitter and what is beta it is V F by V naught beta is the output by input V F by V naught here beta is 1 V f by V naught is 1 here because both are 1 and the same V f is equal to V f here. So, it is 1 with feedback what is A f it is o V naught by V s and we know that it is A by 1 plus beta A and whatever we have derived here you have to substitute and finally, it is equivalent approximately equivalent to 1 and next is current series feedback previously we have seen three circuits for voltage series feedback one with FET and another one is with the operational amplifier and next is with BJT in emitter follower configuration. Now, it is current series feedback if you want to uh, take current from the output what you have to do you have to take it in series right you have to connect the feedback signal in series with the input signal according to this configuration current series feedback. So, here the current through this resistance. So, this is again the current series feedback for using BJT and you are taking the output across the collector terminal not across the emitter terminal as in the previous case it is across the collector terminal it is the emit common emitter configuration and the current flowing through this resistance is the output current because the current flowing through R c is going to be approximately equal to the current flowing through R e. So, we are considering this current as the output current and this some of the output current is, is going to give you the voltage across the resistance R e and that voltage is fed back to the input side in series and the effective voltage is derived as V i here. So, the equivalent circuit of this particular circuit this uh, common emitter circuit is given here in the next diagram. We know that uh, H i e is the input impedance of the circuit internal parameters all these are the internal parameters H i e is the input impedance H of e is the forward current transfer ratio this is the an approximate model another two parameters are considered to be neglected here. So, from this circuit they have derived we have derived A is equal to I naught by V i the gain of the amplifier normally why it is I naught by V i is it is current series feedback the output is the current 
So, we have taken the output current here as voltage across the resistance Re. So, it is I naught by V i and how the I naught is given as minus I B H F E is from this formula. So, from this circuit. So, here this is I naught, I naught is the current flowing through the resistance R C. When you consider this current source, it is reversed. So, it is minus I B H F E divided by the total current I B H I E plus R E. And after that it is reduced as like I B is cancelled here and uh, so it is reduced like this. And beta is V F by V naught here, beta is V F by V naught and uh, simplified as minus R E. The input and output impedances are derived as from this circuit always from this equivalent circuit derived as zeta is derived as R B parallel with H I E plus R E, R E is not given here. So, it is H I E is included with R E here. So, R B parallel with H I E plus R E and Z naught the output impedance is only the resistance R C which is connected at the collector terminal. So, that is the input and output impedances without feedback. If it is with feedback, V I naught the gain with feedback is given as I naught by V s and the formula general formula is A by 1 plus beta A. We know what is A and we know what is beta. Every uh, answers are substituted instead of A and beta here and this is the equation derived for gain with feedback. The input output impedance is calculated as we know that for current series feedback the input impedance is increased as well as the output impedance is also increased. So, according to this formula we will be getting these answers. The voltage gain with feedback is V naught by V s it is given as I naught R c divided by V s according to this circuit it is V naught is I naught R c it is replaced by I naught R c by V s and after that I naught by R V s is replaced by A f and A f already we have derived which was substituted here. So, these are the changes happened with the feedback before without the feedback these are, these are the values for the gain of the amplifier beta the gain of the feedback network and input impedances output impedance. And if it is with the feedback the changes happened here was derived from the circuit using BJT as a common emitter mode. And this is voltage shunt feedback, voltage shunt feedback is at both the sides at the input side as well as the output side the connection must be parallel because for voltage you have to take parallel connection you have to give a parallel connection and if it is shunt is mentioned the input the whatever the output of the feedback network has to be connected in parallel with the input signal and that is what given in the circuits. Here the output voltage at this point is taken or fed back to the input of that is to the gate terminal of the FET. So, here the output is taken and uh, fed back through the resistance R f and it is also the parallel uh, connection and it is also parallel connection here. So, here R f is connected in parallel with the R d at the output terminal and it is also connected in parallel with R s in the input terminal. So, so the, the voltage has been taken through the resistance R f and it is connected to the input terminal gate terminal parallelly. Right? So, this is voltage shunt feedback connection using FET and this is the equivalent circuit. Here this voltage source is replaced by the current source and so the resistance is connected in shunt with this current source instead of series with the voltage source that is what here the difference. And um, from this circuit if you derive the parameters A, beta without the feedback and with the feedback the feedback gives the considerable changes in the circuit. And next is, so these are the practical uh, circuits we have seen the voltage series feedback, voltage uh, shunt feedback and current series feedback using FET and BJT. And next is phase and frequency consideration. So, here if an amplifier has to work in an amplifier there are two conditions it has to satisfy, one is phase and another one is product of beta A. These two factors must be in optimum value so that the amplifier will work as an amplifier otherwise the circuit will break and it will uh, convert it into an oscillator. right? 
So, this is what we are going to discuss now. What we are going to uh, discuss about is Nyquist criteria. Before going to discuss about the Nyquist criteria, we have to see these two factors like the product of beta A and the phase between input output of the amplifier. Here there are three values for beta A and the phase angle and three values are plotted in a complex plane. This is a complex plane x axis is real and y axis is imaginary and in this complex plane these three values are plotted beta A we know that what is beta A. Beta A has 2 as a magnitude at phase angle 0. So, 0 in the sense the phase difference between the input and output is 0 there is no phase difference. So, here it is pointed in the same real axis because there is no phase difference and beta A is equal to 2. So, this is point number 1 it is plotted here when you see the graph it is plotted here and the next value is beta A is equal to 3 at the phase angle minus 135 degree. So, this minus 135 degree is the phase difference between the input and output. So, from, from here. So, this is 5 which represents the phase minus 135 and 3 is plotted here. So, this is point number 2 that is uh, the second point of beta A at the phase angle whatever it may be and the third point beta A equal to 1 at phi equal to 180 degree. So, there is a phase shift 180 degree between the input and output that, that is what it means. So, beta A equal to 1 at phi equal to 180 degree is plotted at here the negative region along the x axis. So, these are some example points of the product A beta and the phase angle between output and input. So, like you have to take the various uh, points from the amplifier you have to plot in the Nyquist plot. What is a Nyquist plot is it is going to tell you very easily that whether the amplifier is stable or not. By seeing the Nyquist plot you can say easily whether the amplifier is a stable amplifier or not it has a stable operation or not. So, this is the Nyquist plot for uh, some of the points here and here it starts from this 0 and for increasing frequency it is the beta A point as well as the phase angle is also increased and after this point that is after this 180 degree the beta A is reduced and it comes to 0. Beta A as well as the phase angle is increased for increasing frequencies then the amplifier is stable. This shows the Nyquist uh, criteria. Nyquist criteria for stability can be stated as the amplifier is unstable if the Nyquist curve plotted encloses or encircles the point 1 point that is point, uh, minus 1 point and it is stable otherwise. What does it mean? If this curve does not encircles this minus 1 then it is stable. If it encircles this minus 1 it is unstable that is what it means that is the Nyquist criteria. The amplifier is unstable if the curve encloses the minus 1 point and it is stable otherwise. So, this is unstable curve and this is the stable curve and what is this minus 1 point? This minus 1 point is beta value is minus 1 and uh, phase angle is 180 degree this is the uh, minus 1 point and next is gain and phase margin from this graph we can easily say that what is the gain margin and what is the phase margin so that the amplifier will be stable inside these margins. So, here this is the Bode plot the frequency versus gain and frequency versus phase angle here. The first one is frequency versus gain and second one is frequency versus phase. So, what is uh, gain margin is when you see the gain curve along the frequency. So, the negative value of the gain in dB at 180 degree you have to relate both the graphs. The negative value of the gain in dB at 180 degree is the gain margin and what is the phase margin? It is 180 degree minus the phase value of gain which intercepts 0 dB. So, the gain which intercepts 0 dB has one phase value 
this the difference between that face value and 180 degree is the face margin. So, this has to satisfy for a stable operation of an amplifier. So, let us summarize what we have seen today. The effect of feedback on gain and bandwidth, practical feedback circuits and phase and frequency considerations in which Nyquist criteria and gain and phase margin. Try to answer for these questions, what are the circuit improvements by negative feedback and what is Nyquist criteria, define gain margin and define phase margin. Thank you.